is up welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're anything like me and you've struggled with your ADHD symptom at some point of your life and it may be actually today you've looked up ADHD supplements and drugs that can help with your symptoms are symptoms such as time management consistency impulse control emotional regulation anything that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis we have dealt with it as we were kids and now we're dealing with it as adults or maybe we have a kid that is struggling with that I totally understand when you're looking for supplements that can help you with these symptoms it's a lot to take in I also picked four Amazon ADHD supplements then I'm going to break down all the ingredients I'm going to talk about ADHD drugs and we're going to talk about how these drugs affect us, what my personal experience with this, and I'm going to give you some tips on which ones to take as well as discussing all the science behind everything I talk about on this video. So if you're excited, please make sure you grab a pen and paper because it's going to be a long video. Now if you have ADHD and you have trouble focusing, I have a tip for you. You can actually play this video at 1.5 or 1.75 speed. There are chapters in the bottom if you want to skip through a chapter that you don't want to listen to, but I definitely recommend go through the entire video because it's full of information. The reason I took through three weeks to upload is because putting everything together for you and fact checking everything took me a very long time and I don't have anyone to help me and I have a lot of other projects going on on the side so I'm sorry about that and I really hope you guys find this video useful by the way if you guys are new here my name is Seppi I have ADHD I've lost over 50 pounds over the past few years and I've been able to keep it off successfully I'm passionate about weight loss ADHD and nutrition and this is all my channel is about so if that's something you're into please make sure you give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel hit the bell button because all of these really help my channel grow so I can reach more people. Thank you so much and let's get started. So let's start the video by talking about ADHD drugs. The most popular ones that are out there is Adderall, Ritalin, Modafinil, and Armomodafinil. These drugs are all kind of similar, but they are different in some ways, but they all have one thing in common. They all affect the central nervous system and they cause wakefulness, focus, and high levels of energy. So how does the ADHD brain work? There are two different types of research that is done on this. One type is saying that we actually lack neurotransmitters such as dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, and the other type of research is saying we have a lot of dopamine transmitters so we flush out these out of our system so quickly that we don't get the effect of dopamine we don't really experience this because they get flushed out of our system so quickly either way at the end of the day we lack these neurotransmitters we need these to be able to focus to be able to impulse control and do other normal things during the day but we're missing it and these drugs such as Ritalin help us do that Ritalin is an NDRI NDRI is a norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor. Inhibit is such a weird word here. Why do we want to inhibit anything at this point? We lack dopamine, so why are we inhibiting it? We are actually inhibiting the reuptake of dopamine. So we're going to have more dopamine and norepinephrine available for our brain cells. This is why Ritalin helps and Ritalin is the solution, right? Low dopamine, high dopamine, problem solved. And I really wish the word worked like that. I have a problem, I take a drug for it, problem solved. Unfortunately, that's not how things work. Work. Now before I share my personal opinion, I will back it up by science first and then I will share my experience and my opinion with you guys as well if that's okay. Now if you personally have any experience with any of the ADHD drugs, we would love to hear what your experience with any of these drugs were. If you don't mind, take a few minutes to comment down below. We would love to hear it. Thank you so much. So the first thing I want you to do is to actually Google Ritalin long-term effects on ADHD and see if there are any papers published that shows and proves that Ritalin is effective for people with ADHD on a long-term basis. You won't find it. I didn't find anything like that. So I don't think that there is anything. If you did find anything, please leave it in the comments. I would love to see, but I didn't see any long-term proven effects that helps with people with ADHD. It's kind of a momentarily thing. I give it to you now. You can go to class and you'll be hyper-focused and you'll be maybe happier during the day, but there's a lot of other things that they're not measuring. It kind of sounds like an Advil to me. Like if you have a broken joint, I give you an Advil, you might feel slightly better, not even fully better, slightly better, but you have to go take care of it. You have to go to an emergency room and take care of the core of the problem and maybe get a cast. That's what Ritalin is to me. Like like that's my personal opinion because there's no long-term effect like the problems and the symptoms are going to come back you're going to be dealing with it every single day there are side effects such as it increases anxiety you're not going to be getting enough sleep so all of these are also side effects of the physical side effects of the drug 
as I was googling this I found it really interesting that you will see a lot of get help or if you're addicted or rehab ads for these drugs so it's basically telling you it is creating a lot of drug dependency apparently guys I don't know if you know this but these drugs have been getting abused by people with ADHD or non ADHD they're kind of a gateway drug to take other compounds because these drugs have the same chemical compound formula as speed methamphetamine and cocaine they're very similar so it's very easy to get abused these drugs are kind of like coffee as well I don't want to put them in the same category because there's some of them are less potent some of them are more potent but they're all working with your central nervous system and anything that spikes that dopamine in you especially if you lack that dopamine you're going to be addicted to it if you don't get it you're going to experience symptoms and withdrawals you're going to be sad you're going to be depressed so it creates dependency and as someone who's going to start this at a very young age or even at a later age I feel like it's really scary to be dependent on a type of drug to me at least it's my personal opinion so it's up to you to experience with all of this but personally I think it's kind of risky I mean if you think about it if you're drinking coffee every single day and you're addicted to it if you quit it you're going to experience withdrawals and that's why a lot of people don't like drinking coffee every single day because they don't want to create that dependency now it's up to you if you want to create that if you want to be taking Adderall, Ritalin if you want to be doing drugs it's a very personal choice but my channel is all about healthy eating like the best of the best that you could be if you want to be your best self dependency on something like that is not the best advice that I can give you on this channel. So my experience is that I've witnessed so many students with ADHD or non-ADHD that take Adderall and Ritalin so they are able to study. You take one every night when you're studying and then you're gonna take one or two if you're going out and you want to stay up longer and it kind of opens the door to you know maybe being more open to try different drugs. So it kind of happens like that just to paint you a picture of how it might happen if you have kids who have ADHD this is something that you are getting the right dose it is prescribed by the doctor your kid is taking it but they're when they're 17 they're gonna hear you know one of their friends are taking it they're crushing Adderall and they're snorting it things like that that you hear is going to be really scary so it's better not to open that gate especially for your kids if you're an adult and you're struggling and you're going to use it and you're very responsible that's a different thing but exposing your child to something like that at such an early age is definitely not something that I would advise on this channel So let's talk about my experience with Ritalin and Adderall. Now when I was going to school, because I was a physics major, I was studying with a lot of science students, a lot of engineering students, especially the engineering students were really into taking Adderall and Ritalin so they can focus and finish their projects on time. So one day I decided to actually try it. Now that I think back, because I had ADHD, I didn't feel any anxiety or anything really superficial at that point. I just felt really focused and I wanted to study. I was very happy. I played some music. I really got into studying. Studying, but as I was taking it at different times of the day the next day or the next few days afterwards I didn't feel the exact same feeling I felt like I was very anxious all of a sudden and I couldn't really focus on studying specifically I could focus on whatever I wanted to do for example if I wanted to go out and party or if I wanted to like watch something I would focus on that too like I wouldn't get distracted while I was doing that but it wasn't necessarily helpful uh, with studying for me I guess it really depends on what you want to do at the moment and it would help you with that but because I was taking that to be able to focus more on my studies and it wasn't really doing that because I wasn't focused and so it, I just stopped taking it now that I think back the few times that I had a good experience with it while I was studying it was a placebo effect because if they give you a pill and they tell you this is going to help you study and focus you're going to want to experience that so automatically that's what you're going to focus on and but like generally I felt like it wasn't something that I could really help for like as a magical thing that is going to help me fix my life life type of thing you know what I mean like if your kid is already distracted and thinking about other things and doesn't like studying the root of the problem is to figure out what that child wants to do what they enjoy studying and what they enjoy doing instead of giving them Ritalin it's not going to give you exactly what you're looking for I think in my opinion this is just my personal experience I'm sharing with you guys I hope this doesn't offend anybody and again as I mentioned before make sure you comment your experience down in the comment below because we are all learning every single day so as I was finishing
finishing my school, I did get into trying different stimulants other than Adderall and Ritalin and experience with those as well. It wasn't something that I wanted to continue for the rest of my life. So I took the path of health and focusing on myself and trying to really figure out who I am and what I want to do in life. And that's why I'm here and that's why I'm sharing all of that with you. And I hope it really helps at least one person hearing this out and trying to decide between these drugs and supplements for ADHD specifically. Oh. Part of the video we're going to rank four of the top Amazon supplements that are supposed to be helping ADHD number one focus factor extra strength I wanted to talk about this one because it has a 4.0 rating on Amazon and it's supposed to help with focus and concentration let's look at the label here I've printed it here and the first things that you see here it has vitamin A C D E lots of vitamin B's it covers all the vitamins that are out there 125% to a thousand percent of what your daily value you need is so if you need for example 100 milligrams of something it will cover 200 or you know up to a thousand milligrams of that supplement which is really good for a multivitamin it has less of the other supplements such as copper zinc and calcium which is okay you know you need those you're probably getting those from other food and other supplements as well so that's fine now it looks like a very good multivitamin but let's look at the ingredients that are listed in the bottom so the first ingredient that you notice on this is DMAE which is also a central nervous system stimulant but it's not as potent as you know the ADHD drugs but it still stimulates your central nervous system it is naturally produced in your body and it's also found in fish oil as well so there are a lot of different research on DMA and its effect on your brain function and memory nothing that you know changes your life but it might give you maybe five or seven percent improvement that's why we recommend taking fish oil on a daily basis the next interesting ingredient you see on the supplement is called ginkgo bilboa leaf extract it's a very interesting product because it's been used over the years in china in western medicine to help with memory functions and brain functions so the way this ingredient works is that it opens up your vessels so you have a better blood flow through your veins. Now this is something I would definitely discuss with my doctor before taking for myself or anyone else. It's not something that I would just take you know, by itself. I have to make sure I don't have any underlying issues before taking something like that. So that would be my advice. There's also not enough research that shows that it helps 100% with people with ADHD, but I would definitely give it a try. It sounds like a very interesting ingredient. There was a bunch of interesting things about Ginkgo Balboa that I wanted to talk about in this video if you're not interested skip to the next part but if you are stay tuned so there was a research on ginkgo bapo in 2001 it was a randomized double blind placebo sorry I'm looking down I'm just going through my notes here because I want to make sure I get everything right but it was a double blind placebo controlled study which is a gold standard of research on 61 participants and statistical analysis showed and indicated a significant improvement in speed of information processing working memory and executive processing processing attributes. I will leave a link in the description of this research if you guys are interested but there was another one that was really interested to me. It was on a mix of ginkgo bilboa and ginseng and it showed a 7.5 percent improvement to a number of different aspects of memory including working and long-term memory and this was also a double-blind placebo controlled study that was done over 14 weeks. So these are all short-term period researches but they show some kind of a great result so it is not something that's going to get you addicted to it's not as potent as ADHD drugs but these are worth looking into and talking to your doctor about for sure one thing that I don't like is that some of these researches are funded by not the government not by the university but by funded by the people who sell these products so as I said with these researches you never know but it's something that you can give it a try and experiment with yourself and the, your doctor and see how it works for you a lot of these researches are funded not by the university not by the government not out of interest but by people who want to sell these products and supplements so you never know what the intentions are for example let's say you're a researcher and somebody comes gives you you know a five hundred thousand dollars and they're like okay go research on this and get back to me obviously you're going to be biased obviously you want to please them so it kind of makes them a little biased when you're doing the research as much as you're trying to you know be a very like open and kind of experiment and say what you are observing but at the 
the end of the day, you're going to be wanting to please the person who funded this research. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I guess that's how it works. Like people do research on a lot of these products and it comes out and you trust it, but it doesn't really do much for you. The most important thing is to find out if it harms you, if there are any side effects. Those are really important, which usually and most of the time, all of these researchers talk about on their paper. And that's why something about Ginkgo Bilbo, they tell you that it affects your veins and if you're taking it, make sure you talk to a doctor. Other than that, if there are no side effects, you could always experiment yourself and find out if it does something for you or not. So looking at the other ingredients on this, some of the other ones that I wanted to talk about, which you might find, when I talk about these ingredients, you might find it that is common in other supplements that you're looking at. So then you know what they are and what they do for yourself. The next ingredient is L-glutamine. If you have ADHD, you're more likely to be deficient in L-glutamine. So having it in a supplement is actually going to be very beneficial. The next ingredient I saw that is worth mentioning is Bacopa Moneri. I think that's how you pronounce it. This is an ingredient that helps older people with cognition and brain function. So it's also good that they added it here. Anything that helps with brain focus memory, I guess it's good to have in a supplement that helps with ADHD, right? I would rate this product a 7.5 because it has a lot of ingredients that I'm not familiar with and I have to talk to my doctor. They're kind of iffy. I don't know if they work. If they don't, I don't want to spend the money for something that I don't know, but there are a lot that actually I know that it's going to help me. So 7.5 for this product. And let's move on to the next one. Number two, natural stacks, dopamine brain food. Well, it sounds really cool. The reason I picked it is that it looked cool, it sounded cool, the advertising on it was great, so I wanted to see what it is all about. Looking at the label, it has lots of vitamin C's, B's, and these are all the, the things that you need you know, regularly. If you have ADHD, you need it a bit more, so it's awesome. It has L-tyrosine. L-tyrosine is also a non-essential amino acid, meaning that you don't really need to take it with food. Your body actually produces it, but people with ADHD lack in L-tyrosine, and that's why they need to be supplementing on it most of the time. It's very common, so it's something that you can discuss with your doctor and see if this is something that you lack in your body. If not, then you don't have to worry about it, but it is common with people with ADHD. Also, people who have stress or lack of sleep. So I don't know if it's the ADHD that causes it or dealing with all those symptoms that causes it. You know, at the end of the day, we need more L-tyrosine, which is a non-essential amino acid, and if we don't have it, we could be taking it as a supplement. Would I personally be really interested in something like this? Probably not because L-tyrosine is also available in food. You could actually supplement on it when you're eating. For example, foods like soy, turkey, fish, peanut, almond, bananas, avocado, seeds like sesame. So do I want to really spend my money that on something that includes a lot of L-tyrosine and the other ingredients that are very similar that it can be found in my diet? Absolutely not. I would give this product a 4.8. It's a nice product. I wouldn't really go with this one as a primary supplement. Okay, so before I move on with the rest of the video, I want to talk about omega-3s. This is the most important thing if you have ADHD or if you even you don't, you need to be taking omega-3s regardless. Omega-3s are very beneficial for your mood and for your attention. Basically, they make whatever dopamine that is available in your system more likely to bind with the neurons and pass through and transmit through your brain cells. Now, if your cells are dry and they don't have omega-3 to lubricate them, they're not going to transmit anything. You, even the little dopamine that is left in your body is not going to be moving around and it's not going to be doing any work for you. So in order to take advantage of what's available, omega-3 is so essential for you to be taking and supplementing on every single day to make sure everything's lubricated, everything's running smoothly. I hope this is very clear and you understand the importance of taking omega-3 on a daily basis. And omega-3s come in three forms, ALA, EPA and DHA. ALA is the main one that can be converted to EPA and AHA. You could be taking them separately, but if you look at the supplements, it usually lists all three of them or ALA by itself. So it doesn't matter as long as you make sure you take 1.1 gram or 1,000 milligrams of ALA every single day as a woman or 1,600 milligrams for a man every single day, then you're set. Supplementing on omega-3 is great, but it's even better if you take it from food. Honestly, you won't even have to supplement on it if you're having eight ounces of fish every week.
70, a tablespoon of flaxseed every single day or 15 grams of walnut every single day. You can switch between all of these or make sure you have them all you know, throughout the week and you're good to go. Supplementing on omega-3 is great just to make sure that you're not missing anything, especially if you're going on vacation, if you're having a busy week. If you are having a good diet and you're taking all of this, maybe take one or two a week to make sure that you know everything's working properly. There's no harm in that. So you could just take one or two, but if you're on a budget and you are having a very good diet, you're following everything, you don't need to worry about it. Don't even waste your money on a supplement which you don't need. Supplement works with food. The most important thing is to make sure that your diet is perfect. If you're taking everything with your diet, you don't even have to be supplementing it. To be honest with you, for myself, I'm not taking it because I'm taking one tablespoon of flaxseed every single day and that covers me and I'm good. So it brings me to my next product, Nutripore Genius. Let me know from the look of it, what would you rate this? Let me know in the comment before watching the rest of the video, what do you think about this product? Let's look at the ingredient list. The first thing that I see here is 4,000 milligrams of wild fish oil. I love that. Why do I love it? Because a wild fish is actually living in the ocean. It's eating algae from the bottom of the ocean, which is basically what has omega-3 fatty acids in it. Like if you could actually have the algae you would be good to go but because we can't have that we're just gonna have the fish right so it's perfect if it's a farmed fish I don't know what they're feeding it I don't know if they have the omega-3 fatty acids but a wild fish oil would for sure have high dosages of omega-3 fatty acids and if you look at the other ingredients it has the organic flaxseed I love that it's organic it has vitamin E a total of 1.5 milligram of omega-3 and the only thing I don't like about this product is the recommended dose. It's a lot to take on an every single day basis. As we talked about previously, we need only 1.1 gram as a woman and 1.6 gram as a man for ALA and this product is telling you to take a lot more but I wouldn't be really concerned about that because these are fat soluble uh, vitamins that stay in your fat cells and your body keep taking from it. So if I personally were to take this product, I would take it once or maximum twice a week, especially during winter time I might take more twice for sure and I would take my vitamin D with it as well to make sure that everything's getting observed properly and I'm getting all of those fatty acids especially during winter time because there is no sun and you need all of that vitamin D. Now vitamin D is also very very important in your mood and your health overall and your immune system and I talked about that in this video. If you want to be able to calculate exactly how much vitamin D you need every single day as a nutritionist like, like a nutritionist make sure you click on that video. It's a really good video that teaches you how to actually be your own nutritionist and calculate how much vitamin D you need. So all in all, my rating for this product is a 9 out of 10. It's definitely my most favorite product and you should definitely give it a chance if that's something you're looking for. So the next product I wanted to talk about to you guys is a lion's mane mushroom. If you are looking for an ADHD supplement, lion's mane will definitely pop up and you're going to be coming across of it. But is it helpful? What are the research on it? So as I was doing the research on this product, I noticed that this, some of these researchers were funded by companies in China, for example, who are selling these products for like tea companies. So it kind of made me suspicious. But there are some facts that I saw in this research that lion's mane mushroom actually helps with neuroprotection. So it protects your neurons and it has anti-inflammatory effect now again something like that will not change your life you know overnight nothing will to be honest with you even Ritalin which is very potent it won't but if inflammation or things like that is a concern of yours and I would definitely experiment with lion's mane mushroom and see what it does to be honest my husband has experimented with it he didn't notice a big difference but again he doesn't have ADHD and he hasn't been diagnosed so this is something that you got to experience by yourself but because it doesn't have this hugest most enormous effect on your body and you know for anti-inflammation you could always use antioxidants you can actually better your diet better your sleep if you are doing all of that and you want to take a step further definitely give it a try and see how it affects you it doesn't have any side effects so you could potentially really experiment with it and see how it works and my rating for this product would be a 6.2 and I hope you guys agree. So let's now move on to the next part of the video where I share my own personal opinion and my advice on how you should be managing your ADHD symptoms. Now when I was doing the research, I noticed in one of the researches that said that 
ADHD is often blamed on parenting and a lot of parents feel guilty about passing these symptoms to the children because of the way that they raise the children. Now, I totally agree that it's not the parent's fault, but a child's brain is developed 90% by the time that they go to kindergarten. So when they're in kindergarten, 90% of their brain is already developed and the rest of the 10%, we still have time to change it. During this time, before they go to kindergarten, we teach them a lot of things. We potty train them, we teach them how to walk, they're learning how to talk, maybe we teach them a second language or a third language, we teach them how to greet people, be sociable, but some of the things that we should be teaching the kids, and unfortunately we're not taught in school, we're not taught ourselves, and we don't know how to do it ourselves, and it's not very common, especially in the Western countries, is the fact that we don't know how to regulate emotions, we don't know how to deal with stress, we don't know how to deal with sadness, anger, and we don't have a method to deal with all of this. I don't know how to do that either, and I'm learning to do that currently, but this is something that is going to affect the development of a brain of a child, and this is something we need to focus on. Because if you're not eating healthy, we're not getting enough omega threes, for example. We don't know how to deal with stress, for you know all of these things. Then how can we actually pass that through our child? So our life and environment, like we live in different situations, life situation. It could be a very stressful situation. It could be a negative relationship that we're dealing with. Our work could be very stressful. Pandemic could have happened, and we're all going through some sort of a stress all of these can play a role and it's not something that we can stop it does that mean that our kid is going to 100% have ADHD no but the chances are high and does that mean that that should ruin the child's life for the rest of their life and absolutely not I mentioned all of this to say that there is hope if yourself your parents or your kid are suffering from any of these ADHD symptoms I want to say you still have that 10% of the brain to work on you could actually develop new habits eating habits working workout habits, uh, meditation habits that can help you change your life. I am the living proof that by removing sugar from your diet, by eating healthier, by exercising, by actually meditating every single day, all of these can change your brain and minimize to a point that you won't even recognize that you have ADHD. You don't even have to be thinking about it. Sometimes now I test my working memory and I get so shocked and amazed that I could actually remember something like that because I could for, the, for my whole life, if somebody told me, a six digit number I would definitely for sure won't be able to say it back to them right after because I was struggling with my working memory a lot and that wasn't something that I was comfortable with right now you can give me a six digit number and I will remember it tomorrow it's a huge difference and I didn't really do anything I'm not taking any supplements I'm just living this much healthier lifestyle right now compared to what I was doing you know maybe five years ago and it's not just me, there are lots of research out there that by removing all of these bad habits and adding these new habits, they all help ADHD symptoms a lot better. And I talk about it, my ADHD in meditation, ADHD in exercise, ADHD in diet, all of these videos that I've made, I talk about how they specifically help with ADHD symptoms. But I'm telling you, this is something that you should be focused on a lot more compared to what supplements or what drug can actually help you. Now those can help you momentarily, but you know, but with actually building these good habits, they can actually transition you for better and make you your life a lot better throughout your whole entire life for yourself, for your parents, for your kids. It's just like a life-changing experience and that's why I'm sharing all of these videos for you because I'm so passionate about what I'm experiencing currently that I want everybody who's watching these videos to share this feeling with me. It is also really important to find out what works for you in terms of your career. Like ADHD and career and what works for you is very important because why not take advantage of the fact that we can hyper focus on the tasks that we like instead of forcing us, like I force myself to get a degree in physics in something that I don't necessarily like. Well, I loved physics up until third year, but then after that, it was so hard for me. I had to do so much work to be able to keep up. So the work that I was putting and the results that I was getting, it was just not making sense for me so something like that could really discourage you so why not find out what you're good at right now and what you love doing for me it's YouTube and editing and you know and volunteering and things like that focus on the things that you love and excites you that you don't have to really force yourself to be doing something or being taking supplements and you know forcing yourself to sit in the corner and focus on something that you don't really like so that's important for everyone but I think it's crucial for people with ADHD and I 
would really definitely consider focusing on that if you're a parent of a child with ADHD I would for sure focus on that that's how I helped all of my students at my old school in Helix Academy and I hope that um, you know watching this video it makes you motivated and it gives you some ideas and hope for a better future so in order to sum everything up for you and tell you what I think will help you with your ADHD symptoms even better and more longer term compared to an ADHD drug like Ritalin and Adderall is definitely minimizing sugar from your diet artificial sugar especially if you want desserts make sure you check out these shorts that I make on YouTube they're amazing you can make your own dessert at home I have a free program down in the description below you can download and there's lots of recipes that you can make at home without the use of artificial sugar you can actually start eating a lot healthier adding omega-3s healthy fats flax seed fish oil and things like that to your diet will do magic and wonder you could start exercising if you don't know how to do that make sure you check out my videos on ADHD and exercising and how you can stick with them it really does help you guys this is the video you want to watch next because exercising is key for people with ADHD it produces a lot of dopamine in your body so it automatically you're going to be less likely to want to do other things like you're not going to want to eat more because you're getting your dopamine from your exercise I will talk about that more in the video make sure you check it out right now if you click on it it will take you to the new page now the other things that I want to make sure that I mention here that's something that has personally changed my life is meditation I would love to share more about my journey with meditation in the past two years with you guys on this channel it is you guys life-changing so it's definitely worth investing I promise if you guys follow these come back to my channel in a couple of years and tell me how your life has changed and it will change forever I promise you I really hope you guys love this video as much as I love making it for you guys I love you with all of my heart I hope all of this transfers to you guys and if you want other people to see my videos make sure you give it a thumbs up leave a comment and subscribe to my channel and motivate me so I can make more videos for you guys love you thank you so much see you guys in the next video bye bye Bye.